Hi there, it's Gabrielle Nicolet from Speech Kids. I am a speech language pathologist, also known as a speech therapist, with two decades of experience helping little kids learn how to talk and helping their parents to understand them better. Um, and t last in my last video, we talked about how um, tantrums are a little bit like traffic jams. So if you didn't see that one, check it out. It was uh, from last week. And today I wanted to um, talk about how to uh, avoid the traffic jam <laughs> or the tantrum. Um, because there are some things that you can do when you see the signs of trouble brewing. Um, you know, you, you don't have to commit to being uh, in the thick of a mess uh, every single time. In the same way that some traffic jams sneak up on you, some tantrums will sneak up on you. But just like you can see the signs or you get an alert on your phone saying there's a, you know, a jam 10 miles ahead, you sometimes have warning that a tantrum is coming and, and your child, you know, you're probably aware of some signs and um, signals that your kiddo is getting ready for a meltdown. And when that happens and when you can remember to, to recognize the signs and um, <laughs> none of us does that all the time. Um, but when you can, then you can use some tricks uh, and some strategies to avoid the tantrum. Um, and, you know, if you never get into it, then your, your whole day can just go a little bit more smoothly. Now, having said that, you know, um, tantrums are a part of life and they're going to happen. And so if they happen, you know, go, go back to step number one, which is to breathe and just get through it. But if you happen to see it happening... There are three things that you can do, at least three things that you can do that I'll outline here. Um, and the first one is use distraction. It's okay to do a kind of like, look over here kind of thing when you see that, you're, that your child is getting stuck um, with and, and sort of heading for a meltdown. It is perfectly okay to do something silly, to have something unexpected happen, um, to distract them physically, to point out something, a bird just flew by the window, <gasps> where's the bird? Um, you know, that sort of, again, the art of distraction can sometimes work and sometimes not. So, you know, it's a good first resort. If it doesn't work, don't continue to do it. Um, you know, if you see that your, your attempts at distraction are just making things worse, then go to a different strategy. Don't keep doing the same thing because you're just going to annoy yourself and your child. <laughs> um, but distraction is a really good first resort. Okay. Uh, as a second option, um, you can, um, and it's just like flown completely out of my head. See if you can get to a yes. Um, and by that, I don't mean like just say yes to everything that your child is asking you to do, including like, you know, eating cake for breakfast. That's not what I'm saying. But if you can say yes to something else, you don't have to say no to the thing. And I know that sounds like a sort of a nitpicky detail, but when kids hear no, they know what it means and they know that they should push against it. If they hear a yes, you might get a little bit of wiggle room. And again, none of these work all the time. Um, and so, you know, whatever. If you remember, that's great. If you don't remember, that's okay too. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's okay too. Um, but see if you can get to a yes. So, you know, your little one is saying they want cake for breakfast. Um, you don't have to say we can't have cake for breakfast. Breakfast is not, you know, cake. we don't eat cake for breakfast. You don't have to go there. Um, you can just make that be entirely implied and um, tell them what there is for breakfast. Oh, yeah, cake is good. But today we have Cheerios and uh, bagels. That's your choice for breakfast. Which one do you want? Uh, I think I'm going to have, and then you can go into whatever you're going to have. And just 